Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Deidre Newby, alongside with Felicia Crawford. And this is As We Go in Politics on Newfret Radio. In today's segment, we will discuss the heated and unusual presidential election between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Now, in this election, a lot of inflated information is being shared through the media, leaving many confused and unsure about whose report they can trust. Misinformation, which is incorrect or misleading information, or disinformation, which is false information, is running rampant. If we lack discernment, the ability to critically think, analyze, or hear from God for ourselves, we are most likely going to get caught up in the lies and be led into bad circumstances and situations, as well as support organization groups, people, or individuals that are against the will of God. Uh, Felicia, I would like you to read these two scriptures here I have written down. We're going to look at Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, and then we're going to jump over to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 and 5 and 18. Hosea 4, 1 through 6 of the New King James Version. Mm Mm-hmm. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. For the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying, killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break all restraint with bloodshed upon bloodshed. Therefore, the land will mourn and everyone who dwells there will waste away. With the beasts of the field and the birds of the air, even the fish of the sea will be taken away. Now let no man contend or rebuke another, for your people are like those who contend with the priests. Therefore you shall stumble in the day. The prophet also shall stumble with you in the night and I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being priests for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget your children. Okay, so now let's jump over to Deuteronomy chapter one and uh, we're gonna read, kind of skip around a little bit. We're gonna start off with verses one and two. And then we're going to jump over to fifth five, excuse me, verse five through 18. You can read that as well. Deuteronomy chapter one, one and two. Mm -hmm. These are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel on this side of the Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain opposite Suf, between Paran, Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth, and Dizahab. It is eleven day it is eleven days journey from Hor by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. And then Over. drop down to five and read it all the way down to eighteen. On this side of the Jordan, in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this law, saying, The Lord our God spoke to us in Orb, saying, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the lowland, in the south, and on the sea coast, to the land of the Canaanites, and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them a, and their descendants after them. And I spoke to you at, the t- at that time, saying, I alone am not able to hear you. The Lord your God has multiplied you, and here you are today as the stars, stars of heaven in multitude. All the way down to 18. May the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more numerous 
than you are and bless you as he has promised you. How can I alone bear your problems and your burdens and your complaints? Choose wise, understanding, and knowledgeable men from among your tribes, and I will make them heads over you. And you answered me and said, The thing which you have told us to do is good. So I took the heads of your tribes, wise and knowledgeable men, and made them heads over you leaders of thousands, leaders of hundreds, leaders of fifties, leaders of tens, and officers for your tribes. Then I commanded your judges at that time saying, hear the cases between your brethren and judge righteously between a man and his brother or the stranger who is with you. You shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid in any man's presence, for the judgment is God's. The case that is too hard for you, bring to me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at that time all the things which you should do. Okay, thank you for reading that. Now, Felicia, for our listeners... Can you break down these two scriptures and then explain to our listeners what that looks like regarding the 200, I mean, 2024 presidential election? So with priests who were leaders in Israel, and we look at the leaders that we have before us today, we are in an imperfect world, in an imperfect world system. And Jesus said that, He's not taking us out of the world, but we remain in it, even though we're not of it. But we're of the kingdom of God. And God has specific laws and standards. He will not lower his laws and standards. And as leaders in the body of Christ, we have to teach people. Leaders have to teach the sons and daughters to the people of God who are under your influence, that we are not to do things the world way. We're not to act like the world, think like the world, perceive like the world, reason like the world. Having the mind of Christ is is having the mind who's able to rise above what the world call conspiracy to see truth, for Jesus is truth. In any him, leaders, we're to adhere to his standard. standard. We don't lower God's standard. Standard, God's standard cannot be lowered. We rise to his standard by obedience. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. What are these commandments? The Lord God wrote 10 commandments. Those other commandments, the 613, those 600 and were supposed to be fences to protect from violating the 10 commandments of God. You should have no other God before me. You should not murder. And abortion is murder. Because God said before you was formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Life begins at conception. But when you side with policies and agendas that uphold the very thing God said you shall not do, whose side are you on? And I know that people then will try to justify the reason why, but there's no justification in the high courts of heaven When you lie and cheat and covet and steal, these are violations of the law. Even Paul said, those who steal, steal no more. When you're upholding, you as the president of the United States supposed to uphold the constitution of the United States. You are servants to its citizenry. 
And yet you bring in immigrants illegally, by the way, and you take better care of those than you do your own citizens. How can one then side with an agenda that is opposed to you? You are supposed to serve all people that are citizens. I don't, I don't care what race, creed, color you are. As a president, you're supposed to be colorblind. You just see the citizens. And you're supposed to serve and protect your citizens. Well, how are you protecting your citizens allowing an open border and criminals come in? from other nations and you say there's no crisis, there's no issue, there's no problem. But how can we as the body of Christ side with that agenda? It's not about a person. What it is about one person, Jesus, because that's who we're here to represent. We're here to push the cause and agenda of Christ Jesus. And whatever aligns with that cause and agenda, then we're here to back. You can't justify co-signing abortion. Regardless, how are you liberal and you're a Christian believer in Christ? I can see how you're liberal and you're a Christian. Pun intended. But a disciple and a believer of Christ, a follower of Christ, how can you say whatever? Do as thou wilt. We know where that goes to and what that aligns with. If you don't, do your research. And that's the problem. Not many in the body are doing their resource before they side with people. We're not to show partiality because one is a woman of color. Oh, I'm backing her. Even if it is one who is a white male and we're backing him, what? Are there, what is their agenda? What are they trying to push? Because whatever, whoever sits in that seat of the president of the United States of America, their agenda will affect you. For the good or for the bad. So this ain't about feelings, it ain't about emotions, it is about the mind of Christ, knowing the thoughts of God. And if you have the Spirit of God in you, He's not divisive. <laughs> you, when I listen to people talk about how they're Christians and well, God told them to vote for this person, but you're supposed to be. I understand the denominationalism and the divisiveness and the different sects of Christianity where they have a particular mindset of what they say is right. So everybody's doing what is right in their own eyes. But that is not for an ambassador of Christ. We don't have opinions. We don't we 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 don't push our opinions. We don't push our feelings. We push the agenda of God and God lays it out for us in this canon of scripture scriptures called the Bible. He lays it out for us. If we are of one heart and one mind, which we're not, but if we are in one heart and one mind and one spirit, why would that spirit in me tell me one thing and that same spirit in you tell you something totally opposite? <laughs> Is the Holy Spirit schizophrenic? He's not. So before we start to push 
on social media in ignorance of certain candidate. First of all, get in your word, get in your prayer closet, seek God, and then do your research on each candidate. Nobody's here telling you who to serve because it, uh, vote for because at the end of the day, that's on you. And you're going to be held accountable. I know people don't think they are held accountable for what they do, but you are held accountable for what you do. There are consequences to every action, be it good or be it bad. And I, for one, don't want to be on the opposite side of God. Now, we have a lot to cover concerning this election. I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to fit it all into one episode. Either way, I want our listeners to understand what is not the purpose of this segment. One, we're not interested in trying to convince anyone who they should or should not vote for, regardless of who our preferred candidate is in this election. And two... We are not pro-Trump. <laughs> Let me say that again. We are not pro-Trump nor pro-Harris. We are pro the kingdom of God. Therefore, we will always and only push the agenda and will of God. For us, anything less is not acceptable. Now, with that being said, I want to point out that our goal in this broadcast is twofold. We are being obedient to what Christ has assigned and called us to do and say regardless of whether you, as our listeners, agree with us or not. And two, we aim to share accurate, honest, and truthful facts that align with the scriptures so that you, as voters, can ascertain the mind of Christ concerning the decision you have to make regarding this year's presidential election. Our goal is to convince you that God cares about not only the kind, the kinds of decisions we make, but also who governs over us and setting the laws or policies we must live by because they directly influence and affect how we live and our relationship with God. With that being said, please be mindful that this episode is not only for the body of Christ, but for anyone who is interested in politics and plans to participate in the 2024 presidential election. So Felicia, let me start by sharing a snippet from a YouTube channel called Kingdom Reacts. CNN just got caught using AI to make Kamala Harris's crowds look bigger. Ain't that sad? CNN just got caught using AI to try to make the crowds at a Kamala Harris event look bigger. Let me introduce you to Catherine Rampell. She works for the Washington Post and is a commentator on CNN. And this was the image she posted. He said, scenes from the Harris fundraiser in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Then people started noticing some little issues with this photo. And she said, ha, getting spam claiming these photos are AI. Not sure why I'd use AI to create a crowd of people in downtown Pittsfield. Then people started zooming in. The fuck is going on with that road sign? How does that happen? Someone explained to me how they can put their hands through the fucking sign. And what language is this? Like, it's very obvious. This is all fake. Like, they tried to take a tiny crowd at her fundraiser and make it some big event using AI. So we're now at the point that in the last two days alone, he caught MSNBC editing a Joe Rogan clip to make it sound like he supported Kamala Harris when actually he was talking about Tulsi Gabbard. Now we got CNN using AI to make it look like people give a about Kamala Harris. It has become very clear that the mainstream media is willing to lie directly to your face. It's up to you whether or not you're going to take mm -mm. You were speaking earlier. You kind of touched bases on something this guy mentions in the video. And he talked about how they're being um, misleading people on particular Kamala Harris campaign and being misleading and the media, some of the media being involved in that, making it look like she's had a bigger crowd, bigger pe more people supporting her than she actually are based on AI. And then on top of that, they're lying about certain things. 
And you mentioned earlier in your comment about uh, the importance of leaders not lying, or even individuals. So how would you tie that in? Um, now, let's, let's look at three scriptures. 1 John chapter 4, verse uh, 4, 1 and 2. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone, into, gone out into the world. By this you will know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses com that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Um, and then I'm going to jump over to 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I'm going to read um, 3 and 4. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itchy ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. And then the last one I want to read is Psalms 119. Psalms 119, verse 2 and 3. New King James, um, mm -hmm. 2 and 3. Mm hmm Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no inequity. They walk in his ways. I stand more than the anxious because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. I have de not departed from your judgments for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Okay, so now, Felicia, when you consider those three verses we just read, how do they resonate with you concerning this year's election? Um, first of all, I, I want to also state because the scriptures you... Uh, can you keep in mind that video too? When the scriptures you wrote, regarding the video regarding the scriptures that you just uh read and have me read one scripture jumped out at me and it was scripture in matthew 24 4 regarding the end of the age and the, the, and the uh, disciples asked him and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age in verse 4 and jesus said to them Take heed that no one deceives you. Mm. So deception will run rampant in the end of the age, which we know that we are in those times, whether people want to believe it or not, or recognize it or not, that deception is a bound. Deception is a lie. So lie, you know, the ruler of this world is the father of lies. So then his system is made up and flourishes in traffic in lies. So then there sh should be no surprise to any believer in Christ Jesus that these things are happening. What is very confusing or, or very, uh, not understandable to me is that how believers who know the word have know their God and 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 have the spirit of the Lord in them so they claim that they can be so easily bamboozled if you will led astray if you will to to accept commentary or quote unquote truths from a system a media system that's based in the world system mm. that is governed by the fathers of lies jesus called him that i mm. didn't and so then when they come it is no is no surprise to me that they will twist and use technology to make a lie appear to truth to be truth and that's what it is in this day the word of god said a lie will be uh be made made to be truth and truth a lie so then for my my thing for the true believers in christ the true disciples of christ uh we know we know why would i even try to take my 
take information from CNN, NBC, and all the rest of them. I don't. You know, I take my news from Holy Spirit, from the Word of God, and I do my due diligence and research regarding what is presented before me. And I think that the itching ears and the teachers, because people have become lazy. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do it for themselves. They'd rather people feed them, but they don't know that what they're being fed is tainted. It is corrupted. And so all these leaders, shame on you in the body of Christ, who would dare promote something or someone that is opposed to the very word that you have been positioned and you're in a position, you accepted a position, whether it was man or God who put you in that position. I can understand if it's man that put you in a position, then you have you have disregard. You don't have any regard yes. for the word of God. Mm -hmm. And you think you're able to pick and choose what you will obey. But that is not so with God. We don't chase after agendas. We don't push agendas of man. We push the agenda of God. And I will continue to say that. Whether you lose followers or not, I'm standing in the truth of who God is, what he's like, and what he requires of his people, if indeed. So shame on you leaders, shame for you leading the flock astray. And God has a contention against you. Uh, very powerful response. And um, I, I'm gonna add this to your thought because I, I don't want to mislead um, leaders, I mean, not leaders, but our listeners that you're not advocating that they don't listen to some news. You're suggesting that when they listen, they must have the mind of Christ and take what they say from with a grain of salt when it's coming from the world media like CNN, ABC. But uh, I think that's hard for, for most to do when they're not mature. Mm -hmm. They're not able to um, glean, if you will, from what people are saying. And they're not able to really discern the truth behind what they're saying because many that i've come across they take at face value what is being presented to them on the news because they think that the you the news is integrous as it used to be when it's not and so they will believe any and everything that a newscaster or, or new, news media would uh present before them, not knowing that they're biased, not knowing that they're partial to one side. Yeah, and, and I think that's a good point because during our generation, when we came up, we followed news. The news reported on the facts. Mm -hmm. It was rare that you would hear them talk about their personal mm -hmm. views or feelings. They were able to separate the two, mm -hmm. but somewhere in our adulthood, the generation of news journalists today have switched to where they're being taught or being programmed people to respond according to their feelings. And I think that's something that's lacking from the church platform. We're as disciples, we're not being taught how to separate our feelings towards an individual, like we have these two presidential candidates, um, from what is in line with God's standards. So I'm just going to emphasize again, and all that is good, and I'm in agreement with everything you said, um, but we're not discouraging you to uh, follow the news because in one sense, in, from my perspective, the news is helpful because for me, it helps me to see and compare what they're saying, what they're doing, who they're advocating, why they're advocating, and then comparing it from God's word, but like Felicia says, I got a little uh, more balanced because I am in God's word. I study God's word. I have 
spiritual people around me that I can lean on when something doesn't sound right. And then I hear from Holy Spirit. So my maturity does allow me to watch and listen to things that probably, as Felicia has already mentioned, the average Christian can't do because they refuse to be consistent and disciplined in getting God's word. And therefore, when they're hearing these reports from newscasters, they refuse to dig and really do the research. And they have not learned or taught themselves to separate their emotionals feelings towards an individual candidate from what God's standard in law is. So good answer, Felicia. And I want to add to that. It's like even I was watching uh, a, a bite, a news bite regarding uh, an ABC uh, interview with, uh, I think it was a senator. And, and, and my thing is, they was talking about how Donald Trump went to the, um, this. Is it the Black Journalist? Yeah, Black Who, Journalist in, Convention in a, yeah. conference or whatnot. And I listened to, I went to that and I listened to what was being said, the questions being asked and how it was being asked. But the thing is, this news journalist, uh, he was basically speaking on that that incident and he was trying to make it seem that what was actually said wasn't what was said mm -hmm. but what was said was what he was trying to push mm -hmm. and i said see this see this twisting this perversion of words so you can't really say something and, and say something in its entirety because he was taking it out of context and not completing what tr Trump at this time was saying about the question that was proposed to him. And so if they do that and they cut, and there's no integrity in it. If you're going to say one part of it, say the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and don't just try to push your agenda that a person is one way because that's the narrative you're trying to push regarding this patient person. Just like the narrative they're trying to push regarding Camilla. Yeah. We know, too. we see, we hear, we listen for those who really and truly do their research and not mesmerize that she's a woman of color, but really and truly dig into her policies and her character too her character and her history go look and see what she did as a da mm. go look at the policies before you come back and say oh i'm gonna vote for her and do the same for donald trump mm -hmm. before you say i'm gonna vote for him because my thing is i know we might get some backlash, but I'm going to stand on truth. I don't care. God made male and female. There are no other genders. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a whole party confused about how to address somebody. What do you want to be addressed as? What's your pronoun? <laughs> what? Yeah. But we, we think that's cool and we think that's cute and we think that's insignificant, but it's not. It's brainwashing. Yeah. It's programming. And they're trying to do it to your kids, but you, 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 oh, I'm going to vote this way because I don't like this one. But who's in alignment with the word of God? Who's in alignment with the word of God? If you know your Bible about Babylon and Babylonian captivity and the, King Nebuchadnezzar, God called King Nebuchadnezzar his servant. He chose him for a specific purpose. Now, if it were you church folk, you would say, God couldn't use nobody like Nebuchadnezzar. But yet God said that he was his servant for a purpose. Now, you might not like the purpose, mm. but mm. it was for a purpose. <laughs> mm. Now we're going to look at another um, 
video. It, but but I can't keep saying everybody's nuts. They're for nuts us. if they're saying or, you're a shill for the Democrats. I, but, that's but, nuts. but I think, Tiff, that's their perspective. Yeah. And I think everything that's a different perspective isn't nuts. Like sometimes, Agreed. sometimes when people, when people are so hurt yeah. and damaged, they go and do the other extreme thing and it is not okay Agreed. and it's not cool, but it doesn't just happen politically. Agreed. And I think it is irresponsible. Like, fine, you guys didn't like the video. Cool. That's not the point. If no. we're only talking to ourselves, that little bubble is going to continue to shrink until we suffocate. We can say that it needed to be a legitimate source. <laughs> had stuff to say about when a Washington Post article came out about black people in Detroit not wanting to vote for um, um, Joe Biden and, and potentially voting for Donald Trump. When the uncommitted option came out, there were 100,000 plus people that voted uncommitted. Um, so... Just keeping that point she's making in mind. I don't have any scriptures to go with this, so you can kind of flow with it uh, according to how whatever comes in your spirit. But when you listen to that, because a, a lot of people are saying what she's saying, and then there are people who are saying the opposite. She, evidently, she's one of the persons that was on the other side. And then after she did her digging research, she swapped. And so, you know, people are saying you're nuts to switch up. And so, uh, and she, you see how emotional she got about it too as well. So just listen to that. If that woman was sitting in front of you describing how she was feeling or someone who speak on the opposite, saying the opposite of what she's saying, what would God be saying to you through the content as you're speaking to them? You know what? I, I, I do appreciate the videos that you're bringing up about um, the issues that people are facing uh, regarding whatever choice or conclusion they come to and having how it affects their relationships mm -hmm. with the people around them because it's sad. Uh, we, we talk about love, but not most people understand what love is. It's unconditional in, in Christ and especially those who are supposedly in Christ. How can I say that I love you, but I turn away and I'm hostile towards you just because you have a different perspective or viewpoint. And the problem is, is that for most, especially we know that the unbelievers don't have it, but those who believe don't have the development of the mind of Christ. And that's very important um, to have the mind of Christ. But there's one scripture that came to mind and Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. And it reads, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles or unbelievers mm -hmm. walk. You shouldn't live the way. You shouldn't make your decisions like that. In the fertility of your mind, that mind, that Greek word for fertility means in emptiness, instability, aimlessness due to lacking purpose of any meaningful end nonsense because of transitoriness it's not persistent you know what is void of truth and appropriateness perversiveness deprivation and that word for mine is news it's n-o-u-s and it means uh understanding reason the reasoning faculty the intellect for the believer it is the organ of receiving god's thoughts through faith in essence it is the power of considering and judging soberly calmly and impartially so if you don't have the development in the mind of the mind of christ and if those who you're speaking to don't have the mind of christ then they're walking around in the fertility of the mind. In verse 18, it says, having their understanding darkened. That word, dianoa, for understanding is the, the mind, the disposition, the thought, the way of thinking. When you break down those two words that, that make up dianoa, it means thoroughly, dia means thoroughly from side to side. Noah means to 
to use the mind. It's another. It's the nose that n o u s to use the mind. So basically, understanding is the movement from one side of an issue to another to reach a balanced conclusion, full orbit reasoning, critical thinking. It you they don't have the the potential. They're not able to critically think for themselves because. They're using other people and other sources to think for them, and so they adopt that thinking instead of being able to critical think. So when, if I'm speaking to her and those like her who had the the fortitude to go and do their research and move their biases out the way. And to judge impartially what is before them, then they'll come to the light of the truth, and not be swayed by their opinions, their emotions, their emotional misconceptions and beliefs of people. Because we are all flawed. We all have our idiosyncrasies. We all have our idiosyncratic ways. We're not perfect, but we are to strive for perfection, strive for maturity, strive to grow up in our faith spiritually. So, in a nutshell, it, it, for when you're interacting with certain people and you start to gauge their mind and you realize. They don't have the ability. Wow. Then you just leave it alone and walk away. Um, I, I think I re realized that in some people, but I never thought about it in the way you explain and break that down. That was that was really good. This has been a topic of conversation, not only on this channel but many channels. On YouTube, I focus on the African American community, and that is also another point of discussion because the Democratic Party is losing interest, or the voters have lost interest in the party in itself. And one of the things that must be discussed is the migrant crisis. And this isn't the first time that we've seen people storm into the city of Chicago's council meetings talking about the issue. There is a lady by the name of P. Ray Easley who used to be a staunch Democratic supporter, but she's one of the people supporting Chicago Red. And Chicago Red is an organization supporting what I believe is the conservative movement in Donald Trump. This is the first time I saw her. To the Afternoon. city of Chicago, I am P. Ray of the 37th Ward. Chicago Red is our organization. Because we started this session with a prayer, I want to start my comment with a scripture. First Timothy 5 and 8 says, But if any provide not for his own, and specifically for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Um, so we see this video that Ms. Uh, Easley was speaking with the Chicago uh, City Council. And she used the scripture, which I want us to read here which is 1 Timothy five. Chapter, chapter 5, verse 8. Can you read that? And then, um, and when after you read it, can, as you respond to it, I want you to answer this here. Um, how does God have, and how God has been speaking to you concerning the presidential candidate election, considering the scripture that Ms. Easley read to those council members, to these council members, how should the body of Christ react to such content? So read that scripture first, and then you can focus on the question. Uh, first Corinthians 5, 8. But if anyone does not provide for his own, especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. In this context, yes, um, Paul was talking to Timothy about uh, taking care of widows, how the care of widows should be uh, enacted, practiced. But in, in specifically in this one, 
He was talking about those who have a widows in their family and able to talk, take care of that widow and they don't. They're worse than an unbeliever. So to take that context and what she was applying it to uh, about a, a government leadership to take care of their own house, their own citizenry, and first before they take care of migrants, illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. You're taking care of illegal immigrants into your house, but you are not even taking care of the the members of your house, the legal members of your house, the legal citizens in your city. How make that make sense? The math ain't mathing, as they say. <laughs> so, uh, in a nutshell, how that relates, it, it relates to uh, your leadership. I mean, yes, we need to, first, for believers, that Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples. Even in when he gave the, the mandate, he said, go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and into all the world. He sent them home first mm -hmm. to take her home first to be. Then you spread abroad your gifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you are spreading abroad your gifts and not even taking care of your the people who are at home, how are you really being a true protector, a true leader of the people? who put you in office to serve. That, that's what many people fail to realize. All these political figures and people in office, they are servants, civil servants. They're here to serve the people of the United States of America, not themselves. And that's what we got twisted now in this day, in this time. So you're putting people in office who are not true servant leaders. You're putting people in positions in the body of Christ who are not true servant leaders. They want to be served. They want to get what they can get out of it. And they care not for the flock, the sheep, the people. And that goes right in harmony with uh, Matthew chapter 20, verse 16, where it says, So the last will be first, and the first last. For many are called, but few chosen. So when we're choosing leaderships, we should, like you've already mentioned, with our leaders, uh, particularly the politician leaders, should be those, like you said, want to serve individuals. And the best leaders that can do that is those who govern themselves by God's standard, by God's laws and commandments, because we know when God puts standards and laws in place, it benefits everyone. No one is left behind. But when man sets up his laws and, and policies and procedures, it usually will only benefit the corporation or the lobbyists or whoever you owe a favor to. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to you saying, uh, earlier they're serving themselves because this person's going to scratch my back or mm. put a load of money in my pocket, whatever the case may be. So good points. All right. So, all right. So this is the last video. And then after we watch this and talk about this a little bit, then we'll hear for your final thought. Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating. I mean, to me, it feels like the media, even the, some of this polling is more about shaping people's opinion mm. than actually reflecting it. Cause the American people, prior to the, all the hype around this announcement, said they didn't like what she had to stand for. And by the way, how is she going to separate herself from Joe Biden's record? I mean, it's, it seems impossible. Yes, on inflation, that jobs yes. report we got yesterday. Or she's not the borders are. I mean, how are they going to get away with this stuff? Or her own past comments. Well, it's very interesting because before uh, Joe Biden's debate that essentially ended his presidency, his yeah. performance there, the Democrats were basically hinting, we're not going to do debates. And then suddenly they wanted to get rid of Joe Biden and they threw him into a debate. Yeah. Um, they obviously want Kamala to win. This is the, I mean, w w of course they do. So you think they might be able to. I. 
what I think is the only thing that could happen is they're trying to put all that race baiting and the black and Indian and ethnicity and all that type of stuff in there and infuse that in there and kind of like distract people from the actual issues because the thing is is this let's be serious y'all seriously if you're watching me whether you're a democrat republican independent wherever what are the policies of each candidate and how are they qualified to run the nation and look Putin in the eyes and be like you better drop that nuke button controller or we're gonna drop on you and that's what we're gonna do don't make us send in one of the few the proud the marines if you know what i mean can you do that if you can't do that if you can't see kamala looking putin in the eye saying something like that that's the wrong person for the nation or do you or, or just admit hey I, I just i just i understand what you're saying still gonna vote for kamala because i hate trump then that makes sense but don't ever say that she has a better track record of leadership and of policy because i don't see none of that yet there's people on the streets that have no idea who kamala is or know where she is where where is kamala where's kamala keep her out of the debate will the american people stand for that they cannot stand for that but i think they do not want her to debate yet they're saying that donald trump is a coward and doesn't want to debate kamala harris you know the guy who just took a bullet a couple of weeks ago and the fact that told you donald trump a coward that don't even sound that those two words don't even go together you just got hit in the air with a bullet and instead of cowering down and running away and crying and laying on the floor and waiting for people to pick you up and carry you out, you stand up and you pump your fist and say fight. At doggone almost 80 years old. Donald Trump may be a lot of things, but one thing's for sure and two things for certain. Donald Trump is not a coward. That Kamala Harris, again, doesn't take any questions for the press, but oh yeah, Donald Trump's the coward. She is the coward. She didn't even show up to the National Association of Black Journalists, right? Couldn't show up there live because she knew there was a Harris Faulkner waiting there who would actually ask questions about policy that would remain in, in relevant to the American people. Yeah, anyone that can call Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, after the way he reacted to being shot in the head, a coward is somebody who's just completely delusional or a liar. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, they know he's not a coward, which is why they're trying to suppress the story, suppress the- Everybody knows he's not a coward. He went into the lion's den of the National Association for Black Journalists, knowing that they would grill him, but he still went there and, stood, and, and he stood on his own two feet. First out of the gate, they were being rude and nasty to him immediately. And let's take all the- the color, the black, the white out of the situation. If you meet somebody, you start to talk to somebody and they just start start to talk to you and say, oh, I don't like your hat. I don't like your jacket. Why, why is your shirt like that? Why is your pants like that? Before they say hello, good morning, how are you? Screw you, whatever, some type of a salutation, you will be pissed too. And that's what he was. On top of the fact that the National Association for Black Journalists, their audio sucked. The journalist audio sucked how your journalist how did your audio suck especially at that level yes if you're doing it alone you're a podcaster or a youtuber or whatever you still kind of checking out these tutorials and trying to figure some stuff out because i did i for sure did now i can do stuff like this because i figured out my stuff but look donald trump went into the national association for black journalists into the lion's den and still stood on his two where was Kamala or Kamala? Everybody says it different. It's Kamala. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Kamala. I want you to look into that camera right there. And as you look into that camera, uh, share with the listeners who follow your ministry what God is saying to you right now uh, concerning uh, this upcoming 2024 presidential election. What God has been speak to, speaking to me regarding this upcoming election is that first and foremost, it is imperative what we do and who we choose. Because who you choose 
can mean a stay of execution, if you will, for the body of Christ, or it could be the total disruption and upheaval in the body of Christ. Because we as sons and daughters are in derelict of duty. The ecclesia is failing to do what it was established to do, and it is to influence and impact this realm on behalf of the kingdom of God. We're here to have dominion in Christ Jesus, not in place of, not instead of, but on behalf of. And we have been in neglect for this for centuries now. But the time is going short. The grace period is shortening. God is weighing. The, the word of God says that they will fill up their measure of sin and then they will reap the judgment of that sin. We still have a responsibility to influence and impact this realm on behalf of Jesus, not ourselves, not our denominations, not our brands, not even our name. Jesus is the only name that is above every name. And I know there's some condition of what to call him, Yeshua, Yahushua, Yahuba, Yahweh. The Lord God Most High is calling his people to one, one heart, one mind, one spirit. It's sad that we only have that representation in the first century church where the apostles that followed Jesus and walked with Jesus was. They were in one heart and one mind and we see what they did. We should be doing greater. Mm. But we are divided and God hates discord among brethren. So put aside your opinions, your denominationalism, and come together as one. So that the Lord God can do what he purposed to do for his ecclesia. Because Jesus is coming back really, really soon. Are you ready? So what is what is your final uh, closing remarks, Felicia? It is written in um, Ephesians chapter 4. And um, I'll start with verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect, mature man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love we must grow up come together be unified in order to influence and impact this realm this world with the kingdom agenda of God in Christ Jesus.